of applause, Ayla. Early in the morning, it's always tough and hard. Fist bump, hello. Take a seat, Ayla. Yes, thanks. Um, how are you? Fine. I mean, good booth. A lot of people there. So third, third day at the fair. Yes. Um, you are right in, in the front uh, where a lot of customers are at your kiosk um, because you're the head of sales and business development, IoT and energy distribution. Um, so I guess there is a lot of people coming to you now asking about exactly these bullets, which I just mentioned, saving energy costs, right. saving time, because that's getting more important, right? Absolutely. Well, buzzwords in regards of IoT, Industry 4.0, Smart Factory, Predictive Maintenance, they're on everyone's lips. But which solutions are available actually in the energy distribution sector? What do you offer there? So before I want to show you an overview about a short overview about our applications, I want to start a little bit. What keeps our customers awake at night and where are the pain points? Where are the challenges? Maybe kids. <laughs> <laughs> right. But what do you think is the worst case scenario? A shutdown, oh, right? Of course. I think, imagine um, you also know it in private life, what it means if you have no power or no energy anymore. And now think about what it means as an industry. All production processes are stopping immediately. So, Nightmare. Right. And that's also fitting to, a, yeah, according to a survey what we have done and also to according of the Association of Energy and Power Plants, 60% of all industry customers had in the last years really a shutdown. And 60. All, that's 60, more than half. Yes. <laughs> and also if the power is quickly restored back, It is a really financial loss, a really huge one. And that's one point. Then you are really dependent on personalized specialists, right? Not, not everyone can touch a medium voltage switch gear. So also here you have an issue. And the other big challenge is more constraints on the really grid side. Imagine this, we have also here our e-mobility stuff and our chargers, but that is really hard for the grid because the grid is not prepared for all these new power loads. And that's where we come into the game. So that sounds interesting. Can you give me a bit more details? Yes, of course. So um, our, we have four different applications. And these applications are all running on Mindsphere, and it's really for the distribution systems as well as for the grid. So let's start with the NX Power Monitor. We call it the digital caretaker for your substation. So uh, um, here we're really focusing on low voltage equipment, medium voltage switch gears, transformers, so every electrical device what you have within your substation. And by using the operating data as well as additional sensor data, we provide a health status really per component green, yellow, red, that you really know exactly what to do. We also provide energy monitoring, documentation, what should be in place, because remember the remaining lifetime of a switch gear is up to 30 years. 30. That's 30. quite an age. Right. Maybe you have lost the documentation. That's a lot of documents. And then maybe you move from, from the offices and now uh, you say, ah, oh, come on, that's old stuff. You don't Correct. Need it, but it's important to right. have it. And then you stand in front of the switch gear. Oh, documentation is missing. So um, that's the first um, application. The second application is so-called C-Protect dashboard. So it's really focusing on the protection relay. And with that, um, we can find failures really fast in the medium voltage network. But the really advantage is that you have also a documentation of changing in settings, changing um, of the fault record. So for example, remember there's a trip, <laughs> not a trip to go, but really a trip in the switch gear. And it's really hard to get the failures out. Normally, the maintenance engineer have to go to the substation, have to connect with the laptop to the protection relay, and then to retrieve the data out of it. And now, You sit relaxed here on the sofa and can have directly a look on it um, on your fault record. So that's really cool. And the third application is the so-called, I call it the guardian of the overhead line. So now we're jumping a little bit from a use case, right? We had focused on substation switch gears, but also the gen energy has to be transmitted. So the guardian is the CCAM localizer, which focusing on the overhead lines. And with that also you reduce really labor and maintenance costs up to 30% because you know exactly where the failure has happened in the grid. And the last is the CCAM navigator. So are you wondering about these gray boxes on your street? 
in in the neighborhood you mean these where they usually have the promotion for <laughs> concerts they were empty the last two years but now it finally starts again that you have the right. gray boxes with right so they really are distributing the energy and normally ah. they have no intelligence in i was always wondering about what's inside really easy a small switch gear small transformer to distribute the energy and with that also with the CCAM navigators really focusing on this transformer substations to monitor and to make them more intelligent okay so you can um, take a closer look on all your substations and critical assets while you sit at home once more right because yeah, also this in was the position <laughs> <in> the <laughs> <laughs> because also in case of an alarm you really receive immediately a notification via email via sms with the exact details what's happening and where it's happened mm -hmm. so sleepless nights are gone easy control from at home right. no stress well but you probably often hear the question um, why should i buy this why should i invest in iot and why do I really need it? Um, lots of your customers probably have already the SCADA system installed. Is there any any combination with this? Shall we explain SCADA maybe first? Yeah, so SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. And I don't hear the question for the first time. So also in a lot of customer discussion, we have it. So if we talk or starting the talk about IoT, it comes exactly this, but I have an existing SCADA system. Why do I need it? And I make really a simple picture of it. So um, imagine you're driving on the road. Nice yeah. car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're driving on the road and you have your steering wheel, right? And that's exactly the SCADA system. So you can go to the left, you can go to the right. Um, and it was in the past and it will be also in the future. You need it. The IoT is additionally, and that acts like your assistance system, right? You have more and more sensors in the car, but it gives you a warning and so on. And that's where the IoT exactly came into the picture, really to make your maintenance, your operation much easier um, and to prevent faults in a better way. It's like talking about the car, um, you have the oil lamp, which signals you, oh, you better take care or it's too late. Or right. like using the, the speed control, which tells you, okay, um, you're, you've reached the limit of using your tires. Or the distance, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have maybe this issue. <laughs> But exactly like this. So that's why I said IoT is really complementary to an existing SCADA system. Nice. Okay. So um, what are the most common failures? Um, can you give us some insights here as well? Yeah. So the most common failures, that's really our advantage. The most common failures in the grid and on switch gears are really good known and maintenance engineers doing a lot to prevent this. So the main causes are loose connections, faulty equipment, environmental conditions. Think about if you are at the sea, right, or tropical climate, mm -hmm. um, or faulty insulation and incorrect work. I mean, we're acting globally. Our tools are um, really used globally, so yeah. we need to cater for all different areas. Right. Um, I assume that when you talk um, to your customers about digitalization, that 80 to 90 percent um, of the same you probably hear questions about condition monitoring. Yeah. So uh, you want to share some insights here and details what condition monitoring is? Of course. Is. So I mean, normally it comes from the industry, right? And there you have often this question regarding condition monitoring. So um, we split the condition monitoring also in the energy distribution into three parts. So the first is the temperature and humidity monitoring. So with that, we can exactly find these failures. Remember the failures of loose connection because we can we monitor the temperature directly at the cable um, connections for example and with this we can prevent really this power outages mm -hmm. um, that's one part the second part is the so-called circuit breaker monitoring the circuit breaker is the most important component within a switch gear so also here we provide a monitoring for it so we're looking on for example the opening and closing times about the current and um, during switching operation the motor um, of the circuit breaker and so on because normally you do circuit breaker monitoring only with a scheduled maintenance where you have really a shutdown and now we can make it really easy remote and the last part is the pd monitoring so partial discharge monitoring so you remember the lifetime of a switch gear. It's really long. 30 years. 30 years. Um, and after some time, maybe you have insulation failures, which are starting 
creepily or credibly um, and to recognize that at an early stage because if they left undetected internal are and with that a shutdown mm -hmm. and that also we can provide and th with that you also extend your lifetime um, of the switch gear so it's a bit like the doctor's check that uh, you're being screened <laughs> regularly really and then picture. you know that you have a, a good health condition and that you're fit or maybe your blood um, results are not yeah, that good. May that maybe you, you know, have you to a little to bit have a look on your healthiness. <laughs> well, here at the fair, it's kind of hard, hard to achieve. Well, but all of that is very easily said. Um, is it as easy accomplished? Yes, of course. And that's why I have brought you with me um, the architecture. That's a typical IoT architecture. What I just wanted using? to say, that's very typical. Um, Siemens-like, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but to see something in the cloud, you need something in the ground. Um, and that's here a typical architecture, what we also used for our own factories. So also, I can give you a lifetime of our own connected assets within our factory. Um, so we have the different sensors. So you remember these three parts of condition monitoring, temperature monitoring, humidity monitoring, PD monitoring and circuit breaker monitoring. All these sensors are connected to a converter box. And this converter box is connected to a um, gateway. I call it, it's the interface between the physical and the digital world. And then send in an encrypted way to the cloud, in our case, to the MindSphere. And there we make the whole wonder of analytics stuff. Wow. And I don't want to go into the details of the protocols you see here on the slide. What was TCP, IC, IE 60850 protocol? There, I can give you later at the booth some more details. I can tell you're totally in the topic and very enthusiastic. That was a lot. Just a quick and crisp summary from your side. Yes. So, um, the advantage of all these four applications is really that you can go digital faster in an easy way. And all is flexible all is modular. So you don't need to go and um, really have to do everything at the beginning so you can start small. You reduce really your OPEX cost. You can also achieve CAPEX deformance and the most important part, uh, important part, you don't have unplanned shutdowns anymore, right? And I mean, definitely don't want, think yeah. about what would happen when now the power is off and all the lights go out. Not nice. So that's why we also recommend to start your digital journey now and operate your energy supply systems more intelligent. That sounds nice. And um, I think our audience can tell you are definitely the woman to talk to when it comes to all these IoT applications and using them, finding it for the right um, usage for energy distribution. Definitely.